thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Peck Africa. So we're going to start this off by you introducing yourself, who you are, what you do, and where you do it. Thank you very much. So my name is Chennai Dara. Um, I'm from Zimbabwe, originally from Zimbabwe, but I believe I'm a, a citizen of Africa. I'm a son of Africa, Pan-Africanist. I'm so passionate about growth, sustainable, uh, sustainable growth for, for Africa. So I run quite a number of enterprises under um, a group called the Dara Group. We have a startup called uh, Bridge Tech Solutions that specializes in software development. Another startup called uh, Bitecraft Technologies, where we are bringing technology to uh, the rural populace and to the ordinary African citizens. And we have worked with uh, the likes of UNICEF, we have worked with Open Pali, which is an organization in Zim. And um, yeah, we are looking to uh, forward to expanding to different parts of Africa. And I'm also an author uh, with five books under my belt, a public speaker by calling, authoring is by passion. And I think yeah, that, that defines who I am in, uh, in general. And most importantly, I'm a minister of the gospel. I love what I do and I believe everything that we do is for his glory. Thank you. That is really incredible. And how old are you? I'm 25. You're 25? 26. Yes, I am 25. <laughs> That's amazing. And you've done all these things. When did you start? So I started at age 22. And uh, between 22 and 24, it is a calling. that was the worst, that was the worst um, period of my life because nobody see what I was trying to build. Everyone mm-hmm. thought this young man is crazy. He's talking about building um, a, a holdings company and investing in startups. Where is he going to get the, the money? He's talking about writing books and mm. you know traveling across the continent. So I've been to six African countries on speaking engagement. Incredible. And that's one thing that people never thought was going to happen. So for me, I believe age is just a number. When mm. you, you say yes to your call, you know, God will use you in an amazing way Amen. that will make people question, is he, is he really 25 or is lying to us? Yeah. Okay, no, truly incredible. That's why I just ask if you're 25. Um, so it is truly a calling. I, I would agree with that. So why would you say that you do what you do? What's your why behind all this? You're an author. You sound really invested in the betterment of Africa. And you are like a renowned speaker, like you said. So what's your why? So my, my, my why, looking at the three things that I do, one which is authoring. So I'm an author by passion. I love telling uh, telling stories. And the reason why I took up um, or why I pursued writing is because I believe that our generation is the role to rewrite the African story. I believe the African story was told in a way that doesn't really tell you know our stories in the natural way that we want our continent to be portrayed. So I'm telling the story of Africa in the modern way that will make generations remember what we really want to do. We might not do it now, but what the continent is all about and to shape the perspective um, of Africa on the global scale. And then about public speaking, because it's something that I do by calling, I, I believe that I'm, do- I don't know why I'm doing this. It's something that I enjoy doing. There is a why, <laughs> something that is within me. And I believe it's more of spiritual than physical and, and the, the passion that I have. So public speaking is something that I do because I love it. And when I do it, I feel like I'm living within the confines of my people. I feel satisfied and happy when I speak to multitudes of people. I, I feel as if I'm making impact and I'm, I'm imparting knowledge and, and transforming uh, people's lives and changing people's mindsets. And then in terms of business, I, I believe that Africa is a sleeping giant. Africa is the anchor of the global economy. And it's only a matter of bad leadership, uh, you know, the bad mindset that people have. But we really need to invest in our own continent because no one is going to come and invest in our continent in a way that will benefit us less than it will benefit them. So if we don't grab the opportunities that we have in Africa and invest in our continent, definitely the Chinese will come through and invest mm-hmm. and take the process to China. So I'm trying to, uh, to build something that can help us to uh, have sustainable businesses in Africa that can give back to the African communities and not repatriate communities, um, a profit rather, to their mother countries. For example, if it's China, if it's Germany or France, they definitely will take the profits to their mother country. But if we do it on our own, we are going to be able to reinvest in our people in Africa. So the idea is creating employment, obviously, 
and helping young people in Africa to unleash the potential that is within them, changing the mindset to help them understand that the greener pastures are not in Europe. We simply yes. have to water the grass yes. in Africa so that it becomes greener. You know, I completely agree. The time is now, and now I have faith uh, that Africa is equipped because I've heard you speak and the things that you, I believe you'll do in Zimbabwe and across Africa, they're insurmountable. So I'm really glad that I got this chance to speak with you. Uh, so you talked a bit about investing in entrepreneurship and in um, young people. Why is it very important for you to invest in the youth and young entrepreneurs and develop programs that are specifically targeting them? Okay, so I, I believe that young people are, are the future and there is absolutely nothing uh, that can be done without young people. Mm. I, I remember in 2019, I happened to be a part and parcel of uh, the Southern People Summit where head of states um, travel to uh, a member state of uh, a member state of Sadak mm-hmm. to discuss about issues affecting Africans. So, in my opening remarks, I was shocked when um, you know I, I spoke about Africa being um, young people being the custodian of the development of Africa, and uh, nobody seems to agree with me. But I believe that we have to invest in young people. Why? Because the future is in our hands. Our leaders are growing old, and and in as much as uh, they might want to stay in power. We also have to give room for new ideas. Our generation is tech savvy. We are trying to, you know, uh, unite Africa digitally. So I think if we invest in the future of Africa by investing in young people, we will be able to harness more in future. These young people are energetic. They have the energy. They have the ideas. They have everything. All they need is an opportunity to be heard, an opportunity to execute, an opportunity to, um, you know, to, to, to occupy spaces. So I believe the future is, is, is in young people and there is absolutely no reason for us not to invest in young people. I completely agree. That is such a brilliant answer. Um, my problem though is that looking at the current situation, there's actually no shortage of like youth and entrepreneurship programs in most countries across Africa. It's like this new fad. Why do you think that not as many young people are taking advantage of such programs? Is it in your experience an issue of mindset or is it an issue of lack of access to information about such programs? So um, in my experience, I think um, it's not about lack of information. Young people in Africa, our generation, if I may say, have, um, there's unlimited access to information. But I think it's simply a matter of mis- uh, misplaced priorities. If you mm-hmm. look at how many young people are on social media in Zambia, you realize that um, there are a lot of young people that are using social media. But if you look, also look at the information that they, um, they, 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 they are consuming, it has nothing to do with development, not even of themselves as individuals, not to talk about, about, about the uh, mm-hmm. development of their businesses or scaling up of their businesses as startups. So I think it's a matter of in misplaced priorities. They have access to the information, but they are simply ignoring it and focusing on something else. And, and mm-hmm. also from my own experience, young people in Africa are obsessed with you know, getting food on the table. Because yeah. of uh, the bad leadership and the bad economies in Africa, yes. I realized that it's always about what's in it for me. Mm. I can't be, they, they don't see the value in knowledge, acquiring yeah. knowledge. I, I All agree. they want is instant success mm. and oh. instant gratification, instant mm. earnings, instant mm. revenue, instant profit. And they're not willing to invest and willing and ready to invest in, um, in knowledge which can then pay off later. If, if, you are, if they are to do it now. No, I completely agree. And I'll tell you that that is my biggest frustration with young people in my country. I mean, you can problems can be very visible, but it can also be true at the same time that you're not doing enough. And I see that a lot. Um, they have made Facebook or social media a place where they gather to slander the government. And I'm not saying the government is without fault. And to do all these things, complain, and it's like, you guys are wasting time. I can look... Um, and see all your distractions posted in the page. If you could just cut some of them and just focus just for one second on one area of your life, you'd be so great. And I don't, you can't communicate this without seeming to be like, well, now that you are there or now that you have this, you're speaking like them or you know you're defending the government because you want to work or something. There always has to be an excuse. There always has to be a reason. And they're wasting so much time. <laughs> That's always my frustration. The 
the main power on which we depend, the brains on which we depend, are wasting time, they're too distracted. I think because of what we have built, the brands that we have built, every time we try and speak, they then say, you have, fig- you have everything figured it uh, figured out. Mm. So you are now speaking like politicians. But yeah. the idea is not to be to sound like a politician. The idea is to try and enlighten them so that they can see that we go to where we are because we knew what we wanted to do. We were committed to making sure that we become the people that we are today. Mm. We were not distracted by the so-called mm. kind of um, you know social media news from celebrities or from mm-hmm. the politicians. We made sure we consumed only information that made us the people that we were today. Yes. We knew who we wanted to be and we invested in that person before you could see it. So it doesn't make sense to you now. But, um, you know, we started this journey long back and um, that's what many people don't understand mm. when we speak. Yeah, um, though we think somehow you're in with them or now that you have this or now that you're on this path, um, it's frustrating because as much as we wish that um, things could be different, um, even our governments could do better in terms of employment, funding businesses and all that, that's not the major problem. And when you try to communicate that, it's like you're being one of them. Like The problem is not there. It's still very much at the individual. Um, I want to now talk a bit about fundraising because uh, this is one of the most difficult um, things for entrepreneurs, even myself. Um, you talked about investing in young in young people's businesses and you're very young yourself so can you advise young entrepreneurs and cso leaders on how to effectively fundraise and what they should always have prepared and the information they should arm themselves with uh, when they're seeking funds okay so i think the most important thing with any fundraising project is Mm -hmm. understanding that no one will put their money where there is no solution so you have to have your problem clearly figured out and mm. the problem is not about it's not about you it's about the people that are going through it i've seen it with many people where they bring an initiative an idea actually and then you ask them do the people that you want to assist really know that they have a problem and then mm. they start saying ah we're not sure and i think the most important thing is understanding whether the people that need the help know that they really need help so if mm. you are fundraising you have to understand uh, that the donor is interested or the, the investor is interested in knowing uh, whether the people that are experiencing the problem actually know that they have a problem mm. because you can't provide the solution to someone who doesn't appreciate the problem. Yes. They will not take up the solution. Mm. So with any fundraising initiative, whether it's for CSOs or it's for mm. a business, an investor doesn't invest in nothing. They invest in value and value lies in a solution. So I think you have to have your problem figured out if your numbers right investment is about numbers fundraising is about numbers so if your numbers figured out mm. and be as transparent as possible most young people in, uh, in africa are not transparent mm. they come to you and um you can see even the way they present their you know their budget that there is some form of intransparency and inconsistency in everything they are doing and that makes the investor to start worrying that if this person is not even transparent with a presentation what are they going to do with a million dollars? Mm. So be transparent, be honest, and understand the target audience that you want to assist. Make sure you, you, you present it in a way that can make the investor or the donor to, uh, to, to, to appreciate the problem more and to also have that appreciation that the people that need assistance know that they need assistance. Mm. Because you can't come to me and say, Atendai, you need to stop using Samsung and start using iPhone. I need to be convinced. Yeah. If there is a problem with Samsung, then I have to know the problem so that I can change from Samsung uh, to, to an Apple product or an iPhone. So I think that's very important, understanding the problem and understanding that investors don't invest in a presentation. Mm. They invest in value and value lies in a solution. Mm. I couldn't agree more. Um, it's things that we actually had to learn even through what we're trying to do. Uh, knowing that people have a problem but knowing that even the way we present the solution like we discussed prior um it has to be in a way that brings more convenience or the exceeds the same level of convenience as what they're already using but cheaper uh, you really have to know your people but also get the products to them i think i'd add that part um in fundraising, we made the same mistake. I think you'll say you meet a lot of young people who make the same mistakes. We 
were looking for the funds right from the government bodies because we knew the problem and we knew that people had it and now we just needed to must produce this uh, solution that we had come up with um, so that we give it to people we sell it to people uh, but it's not until you do that your heart on the groundwork of reaching out to people because the funds might not come or there might be a delay some things are competitions and if you're not if, if you get frustrated you quit but if you start small and then introduce your products to the, to the people you want to sell to maybe that's the point you can uh, um, sort of talk a bit on about how we actually have to market ourselves effectively to the people we want to sell to and that's where we can effectively raise funds because ultimately you're trying to raise funds in order to make money consistently from these people how do you effectively market the um, fundraise through them the same people that you're trying to reach with your product so I, I think one of the most important thing i think over the past two years one thing that has made me outstanding in my own way is understanding that people don't invest for example a cso is not that organization that we see actually an organization is is people mm -hmm. and before an investor invests in that particular proposal that mm -hmm. we you pitch they have to buy into you as an individual mm -hmm. so people don't understand the power of building a personal brand with any you know with any institution if I'm to talk about, um, I don't know which business is thriving now in uh, in in, um, in Botswana, but in Zimbabwe, I think uh, you know Strive Masiwa, the founder yeah. of um, yeah Econet here, which is Mascom, I think in um, in Botswana. Yes, um, you, you, you can't you can't um, detach uh, his business from Strive himself, mm. and if looking at him, you have so many reasons to believe in what Econet has to offer. So as young people, we have to understand that the first business that we need to run successfully is us as individuals, you as an individual. And the first uh, solution that you have to provide, the first solution that you need to provide are solutions for yourself. So people need to know that you are running yourself as an organization successfully so that they know that if they are to trust you with any funds, you'll be able to do it much better. So mm -hmm. as young people, um, we have to brand ourselves and market ourselves in a way that can make people believe and see the vision that we are trying to uh, that we are trying to execute or that we are trying to build. And one way of doing this is uh, through the use of our uh, digital tools. I've seen so many young people that write on Twitter. You know, on their bio it will be uh, written that my 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 tweet is not me. I'm not my tweets. And then I get <laughs> permission to say, if you are not your tweets, so where are you getting the information that you are tweeting? Mm. And, forget that whatever you post on social media is a reflection of what's inside you mm. you cannot post about um, um about about fear and say i'm giving up if you're not giving up mm. where are you posting it yeah. it's a reflection of what's inside you your thought process your mindset so i think as young people we have to invest in ourselves first before we invest in anything else because people buy into the visionary before they buy into the vision the vision can't scale up the vision can't be executed um you know, effectively if the visionary is not ready and well equipped mm -hmm. so i think there is power in personal branding i've seen it because that's how i started and, and that's why i'm so convinced that if i'm to start anything today it will sell like like uh, cupcakes mm -hmm. because people already believe in me as an individual okay now that is just brilliant um speaking of social media and the internet how do you think that uh, these tools can help with visibility for African projects? And are you satisfied with the way that we Africans actually engage with African content that is um, on the internet? So I, I think in terms of social media, the world is becoming a global, um, a digital uh, village. Um, because of social media, you can literally chat with anyone from everywhere on social media. But we also have to understand that um, you know, social media can be one of the ways to to ever happen if mm -hmm. you're not used responsibly. So okay. I've seen this in many African uh, in many African countries where young people misuse social media by following trends. I personally don't believe in trends. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, but I don't follow trends because my brand is not built on trends. In, on trends, uh, my my brand is built on on values that are sustainable. So I think as young people. We need to really, um, you know, make things clear to ourselves to say we are on social media. Where are you on social media? Mm. I believe when you have the why for something, it becomes easy uh, for you to be able to know how you can execute it. There's a quote which says, "He who has a why um, can 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 
uh, be any how mm. uh, in terms of implementation so i think as young people we have to use social media responsibly then getting to consumption of african content in the digital space Africans, um, I think we are the most disappointing generation ever. <laughs> Africans don't consume African content. I've seen musicians struggling, content creators mm. struggling. Africans don't consume African content. And I, I wonder why, because African content is the one that speaks to our daily, our daily problems. Mm. For example, this podcast, this podcast speaks to the problems that we are going through mm. in Africa. So a responsible and a young, a young, a, a young person who is ready to develop should actually look for such podcasts mm. rather than looking for a podcast that is being um, aired in Silicon in America, Valley. Not yeah. bad, but is it contextual to the problem that you're mm. facing? So Africans really or the barely interact with African content. I don't know if um, um, if, if it's pride or if it's a matter of us not just um, willing, not, just not being willing to support each other. But Africans rarely uh, interact with African content. I think that's the starting point. When we start engaging and interacting with our own content, we'll provide and bring value to those that are creating such kind of content. And we'll be able to consume content that is applicable in our context, knowing that the person that is producing that content is from Africa it's and they speak our language. Yeah. You know, Tanda, you're such a gem and Honestly, you never even know what to expect when you're going to talk with people. You you get a sense that they're doing great work and because you've gotten their bios and you see what they do, but you never really know until you're talking to someone and you fill them out to kind of get that texture. And I believe you're such a gem and I'm actually excited um, to see what you do next and actually the impact you're going to have in Africa. And I was not kidding earlier. I'm now resolute and I'm actually re-energized knowing that we'll be alright <laughs> if we take this on this self-sustenance on uh, sustenance on this vision that we have for Africa on. I'm actually confident we can do it because young people like you exist. Um, I want to now know what your vision of impact is uh, or the vision of the impact you want to have 5-10 years from now. Okay, so I, I, I'm one person, I think I bought into the vision of um, a South African, uh, Pan-Africanist by the name Julius Malema. So <laughs> yeah. he, yes. He, he says I envision in Africa that is seamless, in Africa that is borderless, in Africa where every African is treated as an African citizen and not as a, a Zambian or a someone from Botswana, a Zimbabwean. So this is the Africa that I'm also imagining and envisioning. In the next five years, I want to see young people from Zimbabwe collaborating in business ventures with young people from Zambia, from Botswana. And I, I also envision in Africa where legislation won't be a barrier for a Zimbabwean to do business in Botswana or for someone from Botswana to do business in South Africa. In Africa that creates opportunities for young people to collaborate and that doesn't make it difficult to do business. So I, I've been trying to achieve this by speaking to a lot of young people. I've been to uh, to Zambia, I've been to Burundi, I've been to Egypt for the World Youth Forum. I've been to South Africa several times, Rwanda, and the Kigali International uh, Conference Center. And the idea is that I'm trying to instill in young people is to say, we can do it. Let's not be divided by borders. We are mm. Africans. I, I consider African as a father. Um, you know, Africa is a father. I always say my mother could be uh, Zimbabwean, but remember we have one father with Africa. And what binds us is that blood that we were all, um, you know, uh, from the same father who is with Africa. So this is the Africa that I'm trying to build, and um, I'm hoping uh, that within the next five years, I will be able to transform the mindsets of young people in Africa so that they know that politics, in as much as it can be a barrier, broken systems mm. can be a barrier, but there are also opportunities for us to fix them. Third leadership is an opportunity for us to become better leaders, better leaders. and stand up and speak up. So this is the Africa that I'm trying to build, and I'm hoping that a lot of young people will buy into the vision, and they will jump on board, and one day will celebrate when Africa, uh, you know, will be, um, you know, a, the breadbasket of the world once again, because I know we have the potential. Mm -hmm. There is no Britain without Africa. Yeah. Minerals are being mined in Africa and exported to Europe. So I think Africa has it all. All it lacks is the right mindset and the right leadership. And we are the people that can transform this narrative and change the way people see our continent. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, and isn't conversation like the most beautiful way to do that? Because most things I've learned, I've had people 
talk and then i've learned a lot in conversation and if we can talk about all these elements different elements of leadership and politics and whatever in africa then there could be something that a common ground we might find something we might discuss as a way of forging forward for young people to lead or else we're just gonna keep repeating the same things and then maybe people can go out and do them so i believe conversation can do that so i'm excited to see how actually big this platform gets because that's where my mind is like how we can use conversation to to learn from one another and hopefully act on what we learn yes that's that's very that's very true that's very true yeah Tenda, thank you so much for making the time. I know it's a Friday and you probably had a lot of things um, that you were doing or had planned. So I really appreciate you making the time. And <laughs> this conversation blew my mind. It was more than I expected it to be. And I wish uh, we could go longer. Um, but I really hope to have further engagement with you in the future. Obviously, uh, the next step for this podcast uh, will be taking it visual, like be, uh, having it in video format. So hopefully one day you'll be in Botswana and we'll record it in person or we can have one over Google Meet video this time. But also you should come to Botswana and we can have another recording in person. That will be so amazing. Definitely. You, you, you yeah. just let me know. I'm sure my team can make an arrangement. I love Africa and I'm one person who is not, as long as it involves, um, you know, inspiring and transforming African lives, mm. I can do anything to make sure that happens. So let's, I'm hoping, um, I know definitely that I'll be in Botswana one day yeah. and we'll record within person, person yes. and we make more impact. But I already know that Africa will benefit from this particular a podcast that you have started yes. and I'm here that there are young people like you that are taking spaces that are taking those steps of courage to say in as much as we have so many reasons to give excuses we are still going to do what we can with what we have where we are I want to Africa becomes the continent that we want to see so thank you so much for having me and uh, I, I, I don't you. think there are I can't call this sacrifice this is why we are like transforming yes. African lives so it's part of the job, it's part of the core, it's part of the mission, and it's not a deviation from what I was supposed to be doing. I'm in the right path, and I'm so happy that I managed to share my two cents. I'm hoping anyone who's going to listen to the podcast will be inspired to do better, mm. knowing that the guy is from Zimbabwe, one of the, um, I don't know how to describe my country, but things are really bad, mm. but I'm so positive, and I'm winning, and I know everyone will do the same wherever they are. Yes. Um, no, uh, there's nothing to say beyond that. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.